Hello, today's Tuesday, April 27, 730, the Diversity, Race, Equity, Inclusion Subcommittee. Our agenda for today is Executive Director Hiring Update, Students, interaction, um, students Introductions, How They Hope to Use Their Voices, Diversity Steering Committee Update, our CAM event and working with the community of Brockton and other business. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor ba Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. GLC 30A section 20, um, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public so long as measures are taken to ensure public, ac public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bps.com ma.org, YouTube and Comcast channel 98 and 1071 HD version. The public can also access this me meeting via this link, www.youtube.com slash the Brockton channels. So I'm going to ask um, that a motion be made for other business. I mean, I need to do the roll call. Sorry. Roll call. Tony Rodriguez. Present. Um, Tom Minincello. Here. And Cynthia Rivas Mendes here. Um, so we were asked to attend the NAACP ceremony where four of our Brockton Public School students um, have been, um, will be awarded. So I'm going to ask to take other business, a motion for other business to be taken out of order so we can attend that and congratulate them. I'll make the motion to take other business out of order. School committee can attend the NAACP ceremony. Second. All right. Thank you. Vote. Um, Tony? Yes. Tom? Yes. And me? Yes. Unanimous. Um, unanimous. <laughs> Hello, Sydney? Is that Mike? Oh. Yeah, we just yeah. want to oh, come. Mike. Is that Michael Thomas? Yeah, we just wanted to come and say congratulations. We're in the, we are in the middle of our school committee meeting. Okay, but go Oh, sorry. <laughs> the students are on, so go right ahead. So we just wanted to say congratulations to our students um, for the amazing things they did with the AXO competition and uh, their great achievement and how proud we are of them. And uh, I'll let the school committee members that are here introduce themselves and also say congratulations. But every year these students amaze us with uh, their talent. Uh, but I also want to thank the NAACP um, for all the work you put in to this, uh, the AXO program, the support you give uh, these students uh, is, is simply amazing, and we really appreciate your partnership, but what you do um, for, this, for our students and all students is, um, again, is truly amazing and much appreciated. So I'll let the other school committee, uh, the school committee members introduce themselves and, and also um, give you the best wishes. Hi there. Hi, Phyllis. This is Tom Minicello. How are you doing this evening? Um, we want to congratulate, obviously, you and the support that you've provided to, uh, to our students as well as our students. You know, the hard work that people put in, nothing worthwhile, um, you know, doesn't take hard work. So we all, uh, we're all very proud of the efforts that go in. This is just another feather in your caps uh, on, on your resume for life, you know, being successful. And, um, you know, you basically are showing, that, you know, your interest, your, your effort, and your leadership uh, in, in, in achieving this. So, you know, we are proud of you. And uh, keep on working hard because I can tell you that hard work will pay off. And um, you, you will be successful and, and, and live a nice life in the future and build on everything you're building on now to, to achieve whatever you want to do in life in, in the future. That's for sure. Hi, this is Cynthia Mendes. I just want to say thank, um, you. thank you for all your involvement in WACP. Also, congratulate the students. Um, this is definitely um, a great way to be involved and continue to be involved with your community and with the society. So congratulations, and we're very proud of you. Good evening. This is Tony Rodriguez, well, Ward 4 you. School Committee. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Phyllis uh, and Pat. Um, Rock and public schools. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
Thank you for all your uh, hard work and um, working with these students and um, pushing them to succeed in um, different areas um, and everything that you uh, you guys uh, strive to do um, with our students. Uh, once again, thank you and uh, congratulations to the students all involved in this program. Well, thank you all. You, you took time out from your meeting to come in and congratulate the students. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thanks again, and um, I'll, I'll talk to you all soon again. Thank you for everything you do, okay. and um, um, I'll, we'll see all you right. soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Mike. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Phyllis. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, also for um, BPSIT and for um, everybody involved with the technology. We were able to go to the NAACP, congratulate the students there. So we'll pick up on the agenda number one, which is executive director hiring update, which would be given by our superintendent, Michael Thomas. Uh, thank you. So a hiring update is the final round of interviews will be next week. Uh, again, this has been a long process, I'm not going to lie, um, but um, this is not anything to do with the commitment to this position. Um, this is the first ever position of this has ever been in the Brockton Public Schools, and I've said this often. Um, it's, it's one of the most important positions we ever hired, um, and it's the first time we have ever hired an executive director with this process, using um, staff members, community members, parents, students, um, getting that set up, getting it going, vetting all, we, over the 100 applications that we had, uh, and then um, having all these set up, it, it was timely. And it's been a long time, and I know it's probably frustrated some people, um, but unfortunately, it wasn't going to be rushed. And if people are frustrated by that process, then, you know, I'm sorry, but it's transparent. It's involved as many people as we possibly could get involved in the hiring of this very important position. Um, and this is, not a, a, this is not a position that just works and then takes the summer off. This, per this person is going to be with us for several years, um, hopefully several years, a position that will be with us for a very long time, long after I'm gone. So if it did take a, a couple extra months, then to get the right person in place and have that person committed to Brockton and doing the work, uh, that is the most important work we're going to do over the next several years, um, then it's been a long process, but I will not apologize for that process. Thank you, Superintendent, for that information. And I also think um, it's just you know, we learn as we go as well. Like you said, it's the first time that we're hiring an executive director, and this is super important to our district. Um, so we want to definitely um, hire the best to start and continue this whole, and retain that person for many years, not just to start and do one or two years, but be here long term to continue to work um, this awesome work in this district. Um, so we do have um, students here today, and I, um, Sharon Walder, she can speak a little bit more, but every Monday she's been meeting with students um, from Brockton High School and from the alternative high schools, um, giving them a space to hear them. Um, they have wanted to be involved with the subcommittee. We did, um, we did um, um, a, a um, what was that called, sorry. It was um, where I interviewed the students about um, uh, two months ago, and they, and they were able to use this app, app, a platform to use their voice. So I do want, there's been other involvement of other students, which is amazing, um, the more the merrier. So I do want to give them the space to be able to introduce themselves. Some you have met before, some you have not. So it'd be great to just give them all the space to intru introduce themselves and just talk about how they hope to use their voice in this space. Um, so I want to, um, Ms. Walder, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. I do want to add that um, two of the students who are here were on the panels for the EDI 
executive director interviews. And so when we talk about uh, inclusive voices, we are really meaning that we are being inclusive in the process of selecting uh, the candidate. And it was important for us to make sure that students had an opportunity to participate in um, the, the the process of interviewing the candidates and giving feedback in terms of who they felt um, would be strong representatives for students in this district. Um, and I just want to add to what the superintendent said about the position before I talk about the kids, and that is um, this is a 12-month position. And so though the person may be getting hired later into the school year, um, ultimately, the person will be working all summer and will have time for planning, will have time for learning the position, will have time for learning more about the district or learning the district and working with the executive team to plan. So um, it has been an extensive process that I have um, been a part of throughout. and. We know that it is taking a while, but it is nice to be able to say that you're actually going to speak to students who have had a chance to be part of that process. And that was important to us um, as we move forward. Uh, the students that I meet with on a regular basis, uh, we meet every Monday. They have, some have participated on the, uh, this committee. Some have done presentations for the Diversity Education Steering Committee. Um, and ultimately, I have continued to meet with them so that they have a direct connection to uh, the district in a way that is different from the past and so that they always have an opportunity to have a voice and representation. And so, uh, and I'm open to doing that with, with any students. And so the nice thing is they have brought friends, they have brought others who have um, said, I want, I want to be part of the decision making, part of the, the voice of students in our district. And we've had a chance to, to really talk about things that are important to them um, and hear from them some of the things that would make school better, um, their experiences better and uh, more supported. And so their feedback is vital to our work, actually. Uh, it's probably the most vital feedback we can get. And so to give students this opportunity to say what's working, what isn't, um, and to express what their needs are and and what they're thankful for as members of the Brockton Public Schools is really a critical piece of the work that we do. So tonight we have with us um, Fetcher Tulin and Emily Ta are both here with us, and uh, I'm going to ask that they, I'm actually going to turn my camera on as well, um, if it will let me, oh, it won't let me. So I will ask that they introduce themselves um, and just who they are, the grades in school, and ultimately what since both of you were part of the process without talking about the specific candidates, just about having a voice um, to share some of that with the panel. And Fetcher, since you've done this before, do you want to start? Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Fetcher Tulin. I'm a junior at Brockton High School. And um, I was I, I was actually one of those people that was brought into the program by a friend, and you know I'm glad I'm glad that um, she recommended it to me and um, allowed me to come in here. Um, but with the interviewing process, it's been it's been very interesting because um, you get to see really you get to see really like um, with the questions we ask, you get to see really where the person's at. Um, where the person's at and like if they truly like really want the job or if it's just something that um they want to do you know to get by or anything like that you know and um you can really see the difference uh, uh, of course like miss Walter said i can't talk about anyone but you know yeah it's it, it was cool to see that the differences in people seeing um see like basically trying to imagine who can sit in that chair and who can do the job. Um, so it was, it 
it was really cool being a part of that. And yeah, um, I want to pass it over to Emily. Um, let her introduce herself. Hi, my name is Emily. I am also a junior at Brockton High School, and I was first introduced to this process through um, Ms. Wolder asking Spark Brockton if we wanted to speak about student issues with a lot of representatives from around the school district. And I would say that I'm here because I would like to share my perspective uh, coming from the identities that I am, like more representation and my thoughts uh, specifically relating to the struggles I face as an Asian person and I guess my overall experience. And I want to use my platform on this sub community to hopefully make the changes that I want to see before I leave high school. So yeah, um, so far, I would definitely say this committee has interested me because I haven't really had any other experience like this before. And it feels really nice to have uh, the, the perspective and the voices of students being heard in conversations relating to equity, diversity, and inclusion. So thank you for having me. Thanks so much for both of you being here. Um, I don't know if the subcommittee members have any questions or comments. And thank you so much for your work with um, the hiring of the executive director. Uh, well, I would like to thank you for participating. And um, uh, can you tell us um, some of the um, material, I guess, that you're covering or, or some of the issues that um, you have pointed out or would like addressed or would like to have a conversation about? Is it hard uh, to hear? Okay. Bad. Hi there, how are you? Oh, okay. They said it's a bit difficult to hear. So, um, oh, okay. Fetcher and M, the question was, what are some of the things that you would like to discuss with the committee? There are things that you would like for them to focus on or would like to be oh, okay. part of a discussion. Mm -hmm. Um I think uh Fetcher, a do big you wanna go focus, first? Um would be like huh? Oh I was just asking oh, yeah. if you can, wanted to go can you first. Hear me? I will let you continue. Oh yeah. Yeah Oh yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, uh, so I think a, a focus would be like the communication between teachers and students. I feel like um, this is something I've said a lot. I feel like the communication between teachers and students can be a little um, static sometimes. You know, um, a student may not feel that like they can talk to a teacher like regularly. Well, they they may never have felt comfortable asking. You know, so. Um, that's one thing that I've always wanted to see changing because, you know, um, because from both sides, you know, the teacher may not be comfortable um, talking about ta talking to a student about a situation they may be in and the student may not be comfortable talking to the teacher about their situation. So it may cause a miscommunication in um, in in what happening. So, yeah, that's 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 one thing that um thought is the communication. Um building building a good community, you know. Well I I I thank you for giving us those comments. Um hopefully we can very soon be in the same space and just have a an open conversation with each other face to face and uh address address issues that um, 
you know, you think are important or you're concerned about. And um, that way, from a school per committee perspective, you know, we, we are made aware of, of the issues you know, that students at Brockton High or you know, uh, the school system at different uh, school locations are concerned with. Because if people don't let us know, then you know, we're, we're a little bit in the dark. Uh, so, so this is what, this is what this, uh, the purpose of this is, so that we can have honest and open conversations and, and uh, be aware of uh, the concerns, uh, your concerns and your fellow students' concerns. You, you know, you, you certainly um, have access and speak to your friends and, you know, so issues that might not be your issue, but an, an issue with someone that you know, we, we're certainly open to discussing that as well, so. Thank you again for participating. I think Emily wanted to comment as well. Thank you for uh, bringing up the fact that like um, some of our friends have a few concerns that they wanted to voice. And although that they might not be on this panel, I wanted to share uh, an anecdote or uh, just something one of my friends have told me, and it has to do with religious holidays. Um, as we are currently doing this meeting, it is Ramadan. And one of my friends told me that during her freshman year, uh, she had a major exam, I think it was biology MCAS, directly on either Ramadan or Eid. And she said that that really conflicted with um, her way of celebrating her own religious holiday. And I know like a lot of other holidays that we have off from school, like for example, Easter that are directly tied to uh, Christianity, those are often prioritized, I wanna say. I know that's like not the best word, but often, holidays relating to the other religions like um, Islam and Judaism are often overlooked in the school calendar. So that is one concern that I would like to bring up. Well, thank you for making us aware of that. Um, um, you know, because if you don't tell us, uh, then again, we are not aware of what the concerns are. So. I can I can understand where um, you know if someone is celebrating a certain holiday uh, and and accommodations aren't made that um, you know they might not be uh, performing their best because they're you know conflicted so to speak so um, yeah that's something that I think uh, we all should be made aware of and um, you know we'll we will try to do what we can do in terms of. Um, you know, the ability that we have, um, and this is good to have this conversation. I appreciate that. Emily, I wanna thank you for that too. I think um, when we look at the calendar, we um, this year was a little different, but we are required to 180 days and it could get a bit complicated when, you know, we, we wanna be able to give students enough time during the summer to reset for the new school year but i do like how you bring up ramadan because accommodations could be made for example um giving students the space of not having to go to the cafeteria you mentioned your um your friend having to take a test so maybe resetting that after or scheduling that for after ramadan so i think how Mr. Menoncello did mention different types of accommodations. I know you mentioned the calendar, we could definitely talk about that, but I think also having the conversation of if we aren't able to move things in the calendar, how then can this look for the students that are celebrating these holidays um, to, best, um, to best meet them where they are, if that is celebrating a holiday or if that's, you know, you gave the example of um, that, but it could be other things as well. Also, happy Ramadan to your friend. All right, if there's- Let them know that uh, you are taking uh, her concerns into consideration. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, nothing is perfect in life, but um, you know, if there's something that we can do that's within our power to make sense, then I think people are open to, you know, doing 
doing so. Um, so, you know, we, we're not going to be able to make things perfect for everyone. I mean, it's impossible, but we're certainly open to doing, you know, what makes sense and what's reasonable. So, you never, when you become an adult, you will soon learn that you can never make everyone happy. That, 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 you know, there was, there's always going to be someone that is not happy because they don't get exactly what they want, but you know, we will try to make sense and do you know, reasonable uh, accommodations when, when able to. Um, um, because again, we want to make the students feel comfortable so that they perform their best when they need to perform. And if that's you know, being able to make some adjustments that are within our ability, then so be it, that don't, uh, you know, that don't, don't hurt anyone. So you know, we're, all for, we're all for doing what's right and doing what we can. But um, to say that, oh, we can fix everything perfectly to the specific way that everyone wants, I wish I could, but I know I can't. So if there are no more comments, um, I just want to thank you so much, Emily, Emily and Fletcher, for being here tonight. Um, we hope to continue to see, see you. And um, Ms. Walder, thank you so much again for providing that space for the students and um, working collaboratively with us, this subcommittee, to give them this platform. Um, I, is there anything else you guys want to add before I move on to the next point? So we'll move on. Um, Ms. Walder is going to give us an update of the work that she's been doing with other educators in the district on the Diversity Education Steering Committee. So the Diversity Education Steering Committee has uh, continued to provide opportunities for educators through the Nellie May Grant. We have the second round of of educators going through the training um, that is presented by Amina Pilgrim and uh, Manuel Fernandez. They are, there's a cohort, three cohorts actually running right now, this going through the end of May um, with 46 people. So this will be the second, uh, the second time we've been able to run this opportunity. Uh, and so that's um, 80, I think 87 people total who have who will have completed the the equity courses with uh, Nellie May or through Nellie May with uh, Dr. Amina Pilgrim and Manuel Fernandez. The uh, diversity committee also participated in the Pollyanna Institute training, uh, which is a curriculum training grades three through eight. Uh, there are eight lessons at each grade level that are equity based lessons. Uh, the members of the committee who completed that training continue to meet uh, with June Saber McGuire, with uh, Julianne Andrade, and uh, will continue to develop ways to implement those lessons uh, with throughout the curriculum grades three to eight. We are planning an institute for this summer so that uh, those teachers and others can come in, uh, really have some concentrated time this summer to look at the lessons, figure out where they really connect to the curriculum um, and design some lessons that they can then plan and practice and work with each other so that it is really deliberate in how it's done and they can then be uh, the models or leads for other people to be able to incorporate the curriculum uh, as we move forward through the school year. And the committee continues to work with the development of the equity, diversity, and inclusion checklist. It is vital that this district make use of that checklist. Uh, we did a training last year. We did a training at the beginning of this year. And uh, the committee went back and used the checklist again to do a self-check at mid-year and really figure out um, how the work that we've done uh, in terms of equity and diversity, how they have progressed as a committee um, and what resources and needs people will have moving forward. Um, so the work is continuing. There are a number of things that we hope to accomplish. The challenge of being remote has 
has been obvious in some of the it's getting together and really working through some of the work that uh, we typically would have done in person, but the committee, to their credit, it's a larger group uh, than we've had in the past, and they've stayed completely committed to the work and continue to provide those opportunities for for themselves to learn and develop, but also to support the work in the district. So um, we, again, will have more updates as we, before the end of the year with some other things that, that we will have this committee working on. But primarily the goal now is to prepare for that summer institute to figure out the best way to incorporate uh, the curriculum from the Pollyanna Institute into uh, the curriculum grades three through eight. Thank you. Um, also, just to add to that, the equity course that educators, that those 87 educators are taking, um, Dr. Mina Emanuel has been working with the school committee and we ourselves um, started part one of the course, um, a retreat that we had. I thought that was an amazing experience just hearing my colleagues that I've worked with in a different area, in a different space, and just learning together for sure and seeing how we can, from our perspective, better the district and definitely be more inclusive and provide more equity. And um, of course, understanding race within ourselves and um, in our students and staff that are here in this district. Um, so, I don't know if anybody wanted to add to that. Um, I know our second part, we, um, um, Vice Chair Mark D'Agostino is setting a date. It looks like it's gonna be towards the end of May. Um, and yes. Yeah, we look forward to that second train. It was great. The first one was great. Yeah. yeah. I wanna say the buy-in, um, without buy-in, those, the courses are not as effective. So I know I've, I've thanked my colleagues earlier, but I just wanna rethink Mayor Sullivan was here, everybody on the school committee, Mike Thomas, Melinda Campbell was also here. Um, so that was great to definitely be part of that. I mean, what I, I think at the end, I, I said how I felt and that is that it's nice to be able to talk about these issues and, and um, amongst people that, um, you know, uh, you can be open and honest with them. I mean, and when you're having a, a conversation about a topic that um, naturally um, brings about, um, I guess, a little nervousness or a little angst or um, you know, just something that you're not used to doing, people are worried about every word they say or how they say it. And if, you, if you're with people that you trust and we're all in it for the right reason and trying to, you know, go forward and improve things if you, if you say the wrong thing or you know people uh, uh, people I think have to can't be afraid to speak and to and to talk to each other and um, you know today it's just crazy how if you don't say the right thing today the politically correct thing it's like you're a shut down shut up and you know you're not welcome at the table but the thing is <laughs> In this world, there are so many people, and you have to, you have to talk to to everyone. And in order to, in a community to, to to make improvements, we have to listen to each other. It's not one group of people's way. It's it's we're all a community. We all come from different perspectives and different families and different religions and different countries. So it's good to be with a group of people that you can be open with and honest with and have a conversation with and no one's going to chop your head off because we all, you know, we all, uh, you know, know I think that where we all are coming from and that's to improve things, you know, in this city and for our kids and our students. Everyone has the, the you know, the, the right motive. <laughs> so now we just have to listen to each other and, you know, and, and, and work at achieving and doing things that make sense to benefit the city and our students and our schools. That's it. And uh, it was a great opportunity and I, and I appreciate it. And I'm sure, you know, along the way, I'm going to say something that um, someone might say, hmm, what the heck did he mean by that? Well, let's talk about it <laughs> so we can work out the details, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, and, you yeah, know, that's, that's what's great about it, you know, and, and yeah, you know, we all we all have a, I think a um, respect for each other in this in this committee, and you know, we just we will work together to do the right thing. That it's been a good experience so far. So, can I ask 
can I can I add something to what you just said? Uh, because it, it's important as we go through this process to know that no one is perfect. Um, but it's vital to our community that we are now engaging in these conversations and that people are uh, participating in trainings. And it's not about being perfect, it's about learning. And so to to hear you talk about that, and Emily just said, I would rather make mistakes than, than not engage in the work. And so the students feel the same way. Um, if we're at least open to learning and to the process of knowing that our differences, um, sometimes we're not going to understand differences that, that people have, but know that we have them and be willing to learn about them. We can go much further than we can if we just continue to not have the conversation. So um, I really appreciate that all of you have engaged in in the work because it's never happened in Brockton before. And so the fact that you are the pioneers of it is really uh, speaking a lot about what you value, what you believe and where you hope this district will go. Thank you, Ms. Walter for that. Um, I do wanna give some time for the superintendent to update us on the RCAM event um, that was a few weeks ago. I had the privilege to be there personally I'm six feet away from everybody. It was not as full as you would hope it. So that was definitely a shock for me. Um, it was um, it was in the restorative church right in front of the Brockton Hospital. Um, and Mike Thomas will definitely go into more details. Um, I know Mark D'Agostino was there and also Mayor Sullivan. And it was a great event. Honestly, it, it just made me miss just coming together either if that's in church if that's you know in a social event but it was um definitely i i i was very appreciative of being invited and being able to have the opportunity to be there so um uh, again i appreciated the invite uh and working with our cam uh again we're scheduling another meeting with them to follow up um because you just don't have a meeting and commit to things and then not follow through uh, as you can see tonight uh, in our budget, budget presentation, uh, the money that has put, been put in and, and recommended for um, the trainings to continue, and that was commitment number one to make sure that, um, again, and I want to do this sooner, it was a two to three year commitment to make sure every staff member in the Brockton Public Schools um, obviously mandated um, tra um, training in the area of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, our goal is to do it much earlier than that. Um, and continue these trainings with Manuel and also Amina, but also with others who do this work, um, and obviously with our new ex um, executive director coming in, uh, helping us lead that, this work as well. Um, but the commitment to making sure every Brockton Public Schools employees receive this training and it's mandatory, and all new employees as well um, that are able to, to go through that. So that was commitment number one. Uh, commitment number two was to um, making sure we continue the, to grow um, our diversity uh, in teachers of color and administrators of color. Um, and that, again, a commitment in tonight's budget to continue that process, not only with the Grow Your Own program, but the recruitment process with, um, uh, of teachers and educators and um, all staff of color, um, but also administrators as well. So that commitment as we will be hiring close to uh, when you administrators and, and teachers that being the majority of that group about a, over a hundred uh, people within the next few months and again a, a big commitment on hiring making sure we're hiring um, staff of color so um, that was commitment number two commitment number three was making sure that um, you know our cam in the community is involved in our new strategic plan um, with SMART goals, and that's clearly in the planning, the, the planning for success model is to make sure that the community, community groups are included in the new strategic plan to make sure their inputs are there and their input is there and SMART goals are developed um, using community input. So a strategic plan, a new strategic plan has to be built from the inside and the outside and, and the perspective of the people in the community uh, parents, community members, uh, ACAM, um, and all the other community groups that we've had, especially the ones that were involved, again, in uh, the hiring of our executive director, that they're all included in the, um, the process of our new strategic plan. 
Um, and then another goal was making sure that we um, provide details of, of um, making sure that um, the breakdown of our, um, of our staff is on our website and able to be um, accessed by the community so they can see, uh, which is public knowledge, pub is a public record, so we'll make sure that that's done. Uh, and then a commitment to making sure we, um, we do not, again, look at our suspension rates, continue to make sure that, um, again, bring in restorative justice practices, reduce the number of out-of-school suspensions, make sure we increase the number of supports for our um, uh, for our students, so to get away from punitive practices and more restorative practices. So that again is a commitment. I just want to make sure I'm just looking at my notes so I don't forget anything. Um, again, the commit to continue to work with ACAM and to commit to building our new strategic process. Um, pr I mean, um, new strategic plan and building the smart goals. Um, Increasing uh, obviously diversity, um, continue with the mandated training for equity, diversity, and inclusion, and um, again it goes back to smart goals, which would be directly tied to the strategic plan. So again, I really appreciated uh, the invitation. Um, I really look forward to going back and continue to work and meet with ACAM and again also other members of the community that we meet with, but. Um, it was a really good night and, and uh, much appreciated the invitation and, um, and really look forward to the continued partnership with them moving forward. Yeah. Thank you, um, Superintendent Thomas. So um, if there is no comments on that, I will move on to other business. Are there any other business before us tonight? Um, if there is not, then we can hold the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Um, Tony? Yes. Um, Tom Minicello? Yes. And <laughs> what is it, Tom? Unanimous? <laughs> Unanimous. Unanimous. As long as you vote for it, adjourn. <laughs> All right. Thank you. With that, we close our meeting today. Thank you for those that joined us. And... We hope to see you next month.